the Paleocene Epoch, which lasted between 66 million and 56 million years ago, was the first significant global division of rocks. The Cretaceous period preceded the Paleocene Epoch, which was followed by the Eocene Epoch. This epoch spans two significant periods in Earth's history. It began with the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary mass extinction event at the end of the Cretaceous. Non-avian dinosaurs, enormous marine reptiles, and other species and plants perished during this period. Dinosaur extinction caused ecological voids throughout the Earth. The Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum marked the end of the period. This was a geologically short, 0.2 million year, period marked by drastic temperature and carbon cycle shifts. The continents continued to migrate toward their current positions during the Paleocene. Laurasia had not yet split into three continents. Europe and Greenland remained united, North America and Asia were still connected by a land bridge on occasion, and Greenland and North America were beginning to separate. The late Cretaceous Laramide progeny continued to elevate the Rocky Mountains in the American West until the following period. The components of the old southern supercontinent Gondwana land continued to split apart, with Africa, South America, Antarctica, and Australia drifting apart from each other. Africa was progressively shutting the Tethys Ocean as it moved north, while India began its march to Asia, resulting in a tectonic collision and the development of the Himalayas. Talking about the climate of the era, though temperatures climbed dramatically during the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, the early Paleocene was colder and drier than the previous Cretaceous era. With subtropical flora flourishing in Greenland and Patagonia, crocodiles swimming off the coast of Greenland, and early primates emerging in tropical palm forests of northern Wyoming, the temperature became warm and humid globally around the Eocene border. The Earth's poles were cold and temperate, North America, Europe, Australia, and southern South America were warm and temperate, tropical temperatures prevailed in equatorial areas, and hot and dry climates prevailed north and south of the equatorial areas. Next, we move on to the oceans during the era. Warm oceans swept across the globe, including the poles. Marine life variety and abundance were low in the early Paleocene, but this tendency reversed later in the period. Tropical climates spawned a plethora of marine life, including coral reefs. Sharks became the leading predators after marine reptiles died out at the end of the Cretaceous period. Ammonites and many species of foraminifera became extinct towards the end of the Cretaceous period. The period had rich flora and fauna. Marine fauna began to resemble current fauna, with the exception of marine mammals and carcharinid sharks. The Paleocene is characterized by the evolution of current plant species. Palm plants and cacti appeared. Plant fossils from the Paleocene and later periods are usually ascribed to contemporary genera or taxa that are closely related. Warm temperatures over the planet resulted in widespread tropical, subtropical, and deciduous forest cover, which were the earliest recognizably contemporary rainforests, as well as ice-free polar regions covered in coniferous and deciduous trees. Paleocene woods were likely denser than Cretaceous forests since there were no huge grazing dinosaurs to thin them out. Paleocene mammals include First, monotremes, the ornithorhynchid monotrematum sudamericanum. No problem if you cannot pronounce that tongue twister, it belongs to the same family as the platypus. It is the only Paleocene monotreme known. Second, Modern kangaroos are marsupials, which are distinguished by the fact that they give birth to embryonic young, who crawl into the mother's pouch, and feed until they are fully mature. A Paleocene example is the Bolivian Pucadelphis and Dinas. Third, multituberculates. This rodent-like grouping includes the Paleocene Tilidus, and is the only major branch of mammals to have gone extinct since the boundary between the Cretaceous and the Paleogene period. Placental mammals become the most diversified and successful group of mammals. Primates, plesiodapids, proboscids, and hoofed ungulates, such as the condyloths and carnivorous mesonychids, are all members. 
Because of the Paleocene's climatic circumstances, reptiles were more widely spread than they are today. Champsosaurs, which are aquatic reptiles that resemble modern gharials, crocodilia, soft-shelled turtles, paleophy snakes, varanid lizards, and protocolydra zangeli, are among the subtropical reptiles seen in North America during this epoch, which are similar to modern snapping turtles. During this time, birds began to re-diversify, occupying new niches. Perching birds, cranes, hawks, pelicans, herons, owls, ducks, pigeons, loons, and woodpeckers were among the most common bird species by the mid-Cenozoic. Large flightless birds, such as the herbivorous Gastornis in Europe and carnivorous terror birds in South America, have been discovered in late Paleocene sediments, the latter of which lasted until the Pleistocene. Climate change were one of the few major reasons for the extinctions of the era. If you liked the video, do not forget to like, comment, share. Subscribe the channel for more such interesting content. Thank you.